Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about unit conversion. So, unit conversion allows us to convert from one unit to another using what we call conversion factors. Now, what is unit conversion? Well, it basically is where we can convert a value from one unit to another. So, for example, if we can convert from, I don't know, kilometers to centimeters, for example. That's a way we can do it. Or, for example, another common one is liters to gallons. So how do we do that? Well, what we got to do is we got to use a series of fraction multiplication to do this. And I'll go over that, those steps in a bit. Okay, so we also use what we call prefix plus base unit in when we deal with what we call SI units. Okay, and we're going to go over that as well. So, first of all, we got to find what those fractions are. In order to create this fraction, we give them a name. We call them conversion factors. So conversion factors are... Fractions used to convert units. And what they have is that they have the two units being converted. Okay, so here's an example. The example that would be, let's say, for example, you buy five, four iPhones. And for iPhones is $1,250. Okay. So in this case, I have something that's equal to each other. We can now turn this into a fraction. Well, whenever we have ratio, we can turn this ratio into four iPhones over 1250. Or we can take the reciprocal of it, which is 1250 four iPhones. Now why is this important? Because now I can now solve what if the person wants to buy 20 iPhones? What if the person has $6,000? How many iPhones can they buy? So we can use these two fractions to help us solve those. And it's because these conversion factors, we call it, are equal. Which means that four iPhones are equal to 1250, for example. Right, so this is what we're going to use. We're going to use these fractions to help us convert units. But what else? What else do we know? Well, we also got to know algebraic cancellation. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you have 3x over 2x. Well, what happens? Well, you see you have an x in the numerator, x in the denominator. They will cancel out. And when that happens, you're left with just 3 over 2. But what if, for example, now you have, for example, I don't know, 3x over 2y times, so I'll put a dot instead so you don't confuse, but times, I don't know, 5z over x, for example. What do you do here? Well, in this example, whenever you're multiplying fractions, you multiply across, and you divide by the bottom. But guess what? Because this, this thing is the same as saying, well, there's an x right here in the numerator, and you're multiplying, and there's an x in the denominator, you can also cancel these out. So now what you have is you multiply across 3 times 5, that's 15, z is still there, over 2y. And that's algebraic cancellation. That's using algebra to cancel. This is why science, uh, math 8 and math 9 are very important and going over that. Another way you can think of it is if I write 3x over 2y times 5z over x, this is the same as saying 3x times 5z over 2y times x, which is the same as saying 15xz over 2xy. And now you can clearly see the x's so well, that's why it's 15z over 2y. So this is 
how you can use these to convert um, units. How? Now imagine if these variables right here, x and y, these are variables, are not variables. They are units. Imagine if that's three kilometers over two miles, for example, times five, I don't know, liters over kilometers, for example. You have conversions. So what are my steps of unit conversion? What do I do? Well, you start with start with value you are trying to convert. And then what you do is you create conversion factor from information. Oops, conversion factor from information. So sometimes conversion factor will be given. For example, four iPhones is $1,250. But sometimes some are common sense. So for example, if we talk about 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So notice they're equal. What do you want to do next? Well, the next after that is set up conversion factor into a fraction. So the unit you do not want cancels out. And basically, you repeat this step with new conversion factors until you get to your answer. Okay, so let's practice this then. So if I look at our question, how many days are in one million seconds? What do we do? Well, in this case, we want to convert from seconds to days. Well, let's see. So our, we are starting with one million seconds, but we got to first of all find our conversion factors. And these are common sense conversion factors because we know how many seconds are there, for example, in minutes. How many minutes are in hours? How many hours are in days? So we could use those conversions to help us. Well, let's see. So in this case, we want to first convert seconds to our minutes. Well, so first of all, we write out one million. I'm going to write out a full number. One million seconds. Okay. So now we want to multiply by a fraction in which we can convert from seconds to, day, uh, to uh, minutes. We know it's 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So that means this right here can be put into a fraction. It can be put in a fraction like, in a sense, 60 seconds over one minute, or I could take it into the reciprocal, which is one minute over 60 seconds. Which one will cancel my second? Think about it. Will my first fraction cancel my seconds or my second? Well, let's try the first fraction. If I put in the first fraction, Will my seconds cancel? Oh, that means, in a sense, just looking at the previous question we did here, will my x's cancel? And the answer is no, because my seconds are both in the numerator. In order to cancel something out, you want one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So we cannot use this. This seconds will not cancel. So we got to use the reciprocal version of it, which means that I got to use one minute over 60 seconds. And what's going to happen here is seconds cancels out. So now I'm in the unit of minutes. I need to now convert minutes to hours. So I've got to write another conversion factor. How many minutes are an hour? Well, before we even do that, where should our hours go? Where should our minutes go? If you say bottom, minutes should go on the bottom. That is correct, because look what happens. If I put minutes on the bottom, my minutes, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, will cancel out. So how many minutes are in an hour? Well, in one hour, there's 60 minutes. So again, my minutes will cancel out. So now I'm in the units of hours, because that's the only unit still left here. I now got to convert that hours into days. How many hours are in a day? Well, before we do that again, let's put the hours where it should be. Hour goes on the bottom, day go on top. How many hours in a day? There's 24 hours 
in one day. And I can see here now, hours, cancel out. So if I punch this all in my calculator, what do I do? Well, to use my calculator, I gotta punch in first of all, a million. There is a million. And then I multiply across. I multiply all my numbers, which means I times by one, times by one, times by one. Well, that means I'm still on a million. Then what I do is I divide by the bottom number. So I divide by 60. I divide by 60 again. And then lastly, I divide by 24. And I'm going to get this. I got 11.574 days. 11.574 days. AKA, in every 11 and a half days, you would have had a million seconds. All right, how about billion seconds? Well, billion seconds is going to be a thousand times that. You could put a billion seconds here and do the conversion again, but you can also know that a billion is a thousand times larger than a million, which means that one billion seconds, which is this number, okay, will equal, which is you multiply this number by a thousand, will equal, if you do this calculation, 11,574 days. And if you punch this into your calculator, so here, watch, I multiply this by 1,000, and then I divide it by the number of days in a year, 365 days per year, I'm going to get that this is equal to 31.7 years. It takes 31.7 years to reach a billion seconds. So for all of you, if you're listening as a student in my class, you've all not even been close to a billion seconds yet. Let's look at our next one. Gasoline is currently $1.31 per liter. What is the price in gallons in Seattle then? So this question, we have this value. What do I do? Well, let's write out first. Okay, this is what we want to convert. $1.31 per liter. And I want to convert liters into gallons. How do I do that? Well, we got to look at how many liters are in a gallon. So you can Google this. If I Google, all right, if I Google um, how many liters in a gallon, and I search that in Google, it actually will give me a conversion. So if you take a look at this, you will actually see that the conversion is 3.785. So one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. Okay, so we have that conversion. Now. So that means I multiply this conversion factor as a fraction. Which one will get rid of my liters? Having the gallons up top or having the gallons at the bottom? Think about that. And if you guess having the gallons on the bottom, you're correct. Why? Well, let's take a look. If I put my gallons at the bottom, that means my liters goes on top. What happens to my liters? My liters cancels out. And now I'm left with price per gallon. So now if I punch this in my calculator, what you're gonna notice is 131 times 3.785 is equal to 496. What that means is price in Seattle is $4.96 per gallon. And that's what's going on there. So that is unit conversion in a nutshell. But what about SI units? SI units are a system of units in which we use in science because there are a lot of different types of units for different things. But we need a standardized system in which we all scientists around the world, doesn't matter language, will understand. And that's what the SI units are for. They stand for the system international, which is French for the international system. That's where the SI comes from. So that's where S and I comes from. It is basically the, the, um, the standard system in science. And what it does is that it uses, okay, it uses prefixes plus a base unit. And we're going to go over what that means. So what are base units? Base units are the units we use to represent a quality. So for example, length. 
length, we gotta use some base unit to define any length. That unit is what we call a meter. And a meter has a symbol little m, the lowercase m. Mass we use is actually the kilogram, but kilo we're gonna learn is actually a prefix. So I'm gonna say in this class, it's called the gram. And we're gonna use a kilo as what we call a prefix later on, which uses the symbol g. Time, times in seconds, which uses s. Volume is liters, which is capital L. And density, density is, in this case, like units are just a combination of beast, uh, mass and volume. It's grams per liter or grams per cubic centimeter. So that's another type of volume. So these are what we call our base unit. Now, what do we have then? Well, we also have what we call prefixes. Prefixes modify the size of our base unit. So what does that mean? Well, there are some prefixes you're familiar with, especially if you talk about computers. We have tera, like terabyte, giga, mega, kilo, kilo, centi, milli, micro, nano. You would have heard of these units somewhere before. Where? Like centimeter, millimeter, milliliter, kilometer, kilometer, which means megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. What these means are, these are the values. So kilo is a word for a thousand. So that is means a thousand. Mega, million, giga, billion, tera, trillion. Centi means hundreds. Milli means thousands. Micro means million. And nano means billion. So how do you read these? Well, how do you read these is so. These are our modifiers. They modify the size of our base unit. So for example, let's look at an example. Let's look at kilo. Kilo has a number 10 to the three, which means it's a thousand. What that means is one kilo something is equal to a thousand of that something. So that something is our base unit. Okay, that base unit could be anything. For example, one kilo uh, meter is equal to 1,000 meters. One kilo Mr. Chills is equal to 1,000 Mr. Chills. That's what it is. So, if we look at another example, for example, like milli, right? One milli, I don't know, milliliter is equal to, if you look at it, 10 to the negative three, it's 10 to the negative three liters. Uh, and if you wanna know what 10 to the negative three means, that's 0 0.001 liter. That's a thousandth of a liter. And that's what these mean. So why is this important? Why are these prefixes important? The reason why it's important is because, notice how these are equal to each other. The moment they're equal to each other, they can be turned into conversion factors. So if they're conversion factors, what that means is we can use them to convert between, for example, kilometer into meters, milliliters into liters, for example. All right. So that is what we have. So example, right, if we talk about one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters, that's the same as saying Right? If I write this as a fraction, these fractions could be one kilometer over a thousand meters or a thousand meters over one kilometer. So how do we use SI units to help us convert? So we use the prefix to convert based on its size or we call it magnitude. But here's a little strategy. If you're converting a prefix to another prefix, for example, kilometers to centimeters, always convert to base unit first, which means convert to the one that has no prefix. And I'll show you an example of that when we get to it. So let's practice. It's very important that we practice. So let's take a look at this first example. Let's convert 10 
kilograms to grams. So we have 10 kilograms, 10 kilograms. That's what we want to convert. But first of all, we want to find what the conversion is to get from kilo to grams, which means I'm converting kilo to base unit. Well, we know that one kilo is equal to a thousand of that object, which means one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Okay? So in this case, 10 kilograms, what is that? Well, we have our conversion factor. We got to put this into a fraction. What is this as a fraction? Well, as we can see, we want to cancel our kilograms. So where should kilograms go? It should go on the bottom because that will cancel my kilograms. That's my 1,000 grams should go on top. Okay. So again, my kilograms will cancel because of that. So what's 10 times 1,000? That's going to be 10 thousand grams. That's my solution right there. 10,000 grams is in 10 kilograms. Let's try another example. Let's convert 5 milliseconds to seconds. So in this case, 5 milliseconds. Well, what is milli? Well, 1 milli seconds is equal to 10 to the negative 3 seconds. So I could punch that in. Well, where should my milliseconds go then? Top or bottom? In this case, my milliseconds should go on the bottom. One millisecond and 10 to the negative three seconds goes on top. Punches in our calculator. How do you do that? Well, again, you're going to multiply by across and divide by the bottom. So you go five times 10 to the power. In my case, my power button is x to the y right here. So I hit this button and I put negative three which is how I punched in my calculator. So you gotta practice that in your calculator. And I get this number, 0 0.005. So I get 0 0.005 seconds. What that means is five milliseconds is 0 0.005 seconds. Okay, and that's what you get here. Lastly, let's look at example number five. In example number five, I'm trying to convert milliliters into kiloliters. We actually looked at both these conversions before, but not directly to it. So we can actually convert from milliliters to kiloliters. There's no conversion. What we can do is we convert milliliters into liters, and then liters into kiloliters. So we can do that. Just like when we converted our time earlier, when we did our time one, we convert seconds to minutes, then minutes to hours, and hours to days. So we can always have these intermediate steps. So let's look at our conversion factors. We know that one milliliter is equal to 10 to the negative three liters, if you look at your conversion chart. And we know that one kiloliter is equal to a thousand liters, or 10 to the positive three liters. We have our two conversion factors. So we write out our first value we're trying to convert, which is 30,000 milliliters. And we multiply. Which conversion will get our milliliters into, for example, liters? Because we want to convert to our base unit first. That's where that little hit tip comes in earlier. So now what we have is we have 30,000 milliliters. Let's convert to liters first. So we use our first conversion. We know that we should put milliliters on the bottom because that will cancel out my milliliters using algebraic cancellation. I'm in the units of liters now. Let's multiply again. So if I multiply it again with the second conversion, you gotta think now. I'm currently in the units of liters. Where should this 1,000 liters go then? Top or bottom? In this case, 1,000 liters should go on the bottom because if you take a look, my liters will cancel out. And now I'm in the units of kiloliters and that's what I wanna get to. All right, so now we punch this all in our calculator what do we get as a solution? So I punch in 30,000, and I multiply it by 10 to the power of negative three. Okay, then I times by one, which is still 30. Then I divide, as you can see, by one, which is still 30, but then I divide 30 by 1,000, and I should get 0 0.03 kiloliters, and that will be my final solution. So. As always, make sure you stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.